Look, and Deputy Leader, yesterday 800 million was allocated to the mother and baby redress scheme, a scheme and rightly so. But what have we learned as a nation? And are the mistakes of today going to be our horror stories of tomorrow? Last week I was horrified by the National Review Panel report into children and young people in state care. Since 2010, 236 deaths have been reported, where 56 of these were through suicide. 30 children died in care last year, seven were through suicide. One of these, whom I knew through the emergency services, was in a residential placement home. Six were in aftercare, 23 young people lived in communities and were known to Tusla with supported services. Now let me explain emergency services to you. Emergency services is something that I would have done for a number of years. You spend one week on and then you one week off and one week on again. You may get a child in the middle of the night and you keep that child for three nights and then there's somebody else to take that bed the following three nights. These are young teenagers who are unloved and un un unwanted and they are then go into residential place placement. Now a residential placement is a residential home where you have social workers looking after these children. So there's no family unit there. There's no love and support network there. And these children are dying today because of neglect by us as a state. And there's some fantastic foster parents out there and foster families out there. So today I am pleading with our nation, with those that have a home, that, with those that have a bed, a spare room in their house, to please consider fostering these children. They do come with their trials, they do come with their, their baggage, but there is no child that we cannot help. Uh, and we have to give these children every possible support that we possibly can. It is wrong that children are dying in the hands of the state. It is absolutely wrong that they're taking their own lives because they see no way out, no way out of, of the system that they're in. They're coming in maybe with a plastic bag full of their belongings. I mean, this is 2021. A child coming into you with a plastic bag, not even have left home with a suitcase. So, and they're revolving through the system. They may end up in care for uh, a year and a half before they find a placement, going from house to house to house and not getting a permanent home. So we have to learn. If we, ha we have to learn about um, what the mistakes we've made in the past, but these are the mistakes we're making today. So I, I hope that the leader can uh, press upon people out there today to consider fostering and opening up their house and their heart to a young person. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure the senators will understand I allowed more time for that particular topic because your personal involvement and your personal commitment to help those most vulnerable children in our community in raising a topic that many people would not be aware of in terms of the amount of children who are dying in the care of the state uh, and thank you for raising Senator, that this morning. Senator Cogan, uh, aside from raising the issue of the mother and baby homes, I spoke about the, the, the fostering situation and just um, I was really struck by what you said and I know that you've worked in that area and you've helped many children um, over the years. Um, just to agree with you, I mean I have a little bit of knowledge of that myself just lo from local issues but um, I don't think enough has been done to actually maybe a recruitment campaign or some sort of a campaign to, to, to out the wider public, because I don't think I've ever seen anywhere um, information around you know, how to become a foster parent or what's involved or you know, maybe putting a call out to the public like you did this morning. I've never seen that really in the mainstream media or even in local spaces. So I think there is a job of work there for Thusla actually to reach out to the public and have a new campaign around fostering to try and get more people into the system because you're right, I think the numbers that you've spoken about, 30 children dying in the last year alone, seven of those by suicide, that is an, that is an absolute failure by the state to look after those children in their most vulnerable time. And I have no doubt that you're correct. The fact that they don't have a loving, stable home is the reason, the, the primary reason why the children are in that desperate situation. And it is a black mark in the state and we do have to do something about it. Uh, and the figures really, they speak for themselves. Um